Ever wondered why these are so shut? Or why these are too high? And why this hurts? Why does this squash your chest? Why are phones too big to hold? Why is this floor so shiny everyone can see your knickers? It's all because men designed the world. Why are we talking about design? Because it's a man's world, my friend. It was mm. just designed that way. A lot of this goes back to Reference Man, who was not a superhero, but was a nuclear testing dummy, kind of created to be the standard person. So he's a man, obviously. 70 kgs, 170 centimetres tall, about 20 to 30 years old, and lives in a climate of 10 to 20 degrees. You know, just like all of us. Yeah. Super relatable. Yeah. Yeah. And it extends to so many things, crash test dummies, CPR torsos, all male, stab-proof vests, uh, average office temperatures, and PPE. So during the pandemic, there have been a lot of requests for specifically women's PPE because the regular stuff doesn't fit properly. And not only are all these things around us designed by men for men, but when women make things themselves, they're forgotten. On The Rag presents Things You Probably Didn't Know Were Made By Women. Beer. Pour one out, folks. In an ode to Ninkasi, the Sumerian goddess of beer describes the brew recipe used by priestesses as early as 1800 BC. Bras. Mary Phelps Jacob invented the modern bra as we know it, but promptly had her patent bought by two dudes who went on to make $12.6 million by 1920. Monopoly. Lizzie McGee made the Landlord's Game in 1903 to show children the injustice of land grabbing and wealth hoarding. A man stole the idea, changed the name, and people missed the point entirely. Computer programming. It was in the 1840s that mathematician Ada Lovelace wrote the first algorithm for a computer machine that existed only on paper. Her collaborator, Charles Babbage, got all the credit. Life rafts. Maria Beasley designed the modern life raft in 1880, which would go on to save over 700 lives during the Titanic disaster. There was room on the door for Jack. Hollywood actress Hedy Lamarr created a frequency hopping technology in 1941 so that Allied torpedoes couldn't be detected by the Nazis. It became a precursor to Wi-Fi, GPS and Bluetooth. Fibre optic cables and other important stuff. The theoretical physicist Dr Shirley Jackson smashed out a heap of research during the 70s and 80s. She worked on over a hundred scientific papers which led to the creation of solar cells, caller ID and fibre optic cables. Plastic to biofuel catalyst. In 2012, 16-year-old Azza Abdel Hamid Fayyad from Egypt found a cheap method that could turn plastic waste into lovely biofuel. The electric Pacifica drum. Industrial designer Rachel Hall designed a Pacific Island-style drum which musicians can plug into an amp. And computers. Ada Lovelace laid the groundwork in the 1800s, but Grace Hopper ran with it in 1952 leading the Harvard team that would make the most important programming language of the 20th century. Isn't it ironic how women essentially designed the internet and Wi-Fi, and yet, in 2020, our main AI servants, Siri and Alexa, are women. Mm. Yeah. But it's not just the AI either. There's lots of our everyday technology that just isn't built for us. Yeah, like smartphones, the average size is 14 centimetres, which is too big for most women's hands, yep. which is why it's so hard for us to take <laughs> photos. And, and the idea of a pocket size smartphone is ridiculous because they don't fit into the standard women's jean pocket. Fit perfectly into men's, but they've got around that problem by not actually giving us fucking pockets. Yeah. Yep. Also, voice recognition technology is designed to register men's voices and often doesn't recognise women's. And iPhone predictive text has proven to associate the words short and fat with women and tall with men. Oh, I feel seen. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> There's also Apple Health, when that launched, it didn't come with a menstrual tracker. I just forgot, you not much bother. And a lot of fitness apps, you can't actually register if you are pregnant. And when I used a cycle tracker, I know that they were selling my very sensitive information straight to Big Tampon and bloody Zuckerberg. So I hope you're enjoying that. <laughs> Do you know what really pisses me off? What? Pissing. Hey, Alex. Hey, mate. Enjoying the show? Yeah, the first half's pretty good. I couldn't focus on that last bit. I'm busting. Why is it always like this? Maybe they just have giant toilets in there. No, they're the same size. I went in there one night. I was desperate. Urinals are weird. Ew. Still, at least it means heaps of them can pee at once. So it's like equal floor space doesn't equal equality. Maybe, maybe we should have a urinal. What, like standing up? No, sitting down like a long trough. Ooh. Ooh. No, Ooh. no, thank you. Maybe it just takes us longer. You've got to take the top half off, you've got to take the bottom half down, you've got to put it all back together again. Do not get me started on jumpsuits. Preach. Look, I'm just going to say it. Maybe they're not all washing their hands. I always feel like there's more older people in our queue. And people with disabilities. And we're more likely to be taking a kid to the toilet. Oh, and periods. I peed all the time when I was pregnant. I still pee all the time. So I guess we're just built differently. Well, maybe the bathroom should be built differently too. Or a bathroom for all genders, so we all wait or no one waits. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The second half is about to begin. Oh. I'm going to do it. I'm going to the men's. Yes. Well, you know what? I'm going to find the thermostat and turn it up five degrees. Hey. Take that. <laughs> oh, second half better not be funny. I'm going to wet myself. That was a lovely documentary mm, very about realistic. our lives. So many nights like that. I nearly got thrown out of a theatre in London because the queue for the women's at halftime was so long, I just decided I'd slip into the men's and I was thrown out and told off for being a naughty Kiwi. It was, so it was racist as well. <laughs> <laughs> I find it really stressful having that really long wait because once I get in, I get performance anxiety oh, and yeah. I do like a weird little half pee because yes. I don't want to take too long. and. That's why I battle UTIs almost constantly. You go, I'll just knock the top off it. That'll that'll yeah. get me through. Just, yeah. just yeah, just open the valve for <laughs> a second or two. And I, I, I get really angry at the way that gendered bathrooms are weaponised to invalidate trans people. The whole idea that you are going to dismiss and ignore a whole group of people just because you can't design a room properly is ridiculous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just stop being so obsessed with what people do in the toilet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So ideal bathroom. We get rid of the men's and the women's. Yeah, no gender. We have a room for urinals. Yes, small room for Little. urinals. Yep. Mm -hmm. And a much larger room for toilet stalls. Yeah, with hand basins inside each one so you can rinse out your moon cup. Yeah. Can I also add just a little, some sort of small transistor radio? Yeah. If you want, yep. for music or talk back. Yep. A heated seat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Possibly a B-day function, B so no toilet paper. Absolutely. You never run out of toilet paper. Good for the environment. Yeah. Deodorant, I don't know. Perfume, uh, TV, snacks. Uh, yeah, in play entertainment. Yeah. It's all good. No bad ideas. What are we doing? <laughs> it, it seems like none of this is working for us. <laughs> it feels like we need a design rent. Design rent, design rent, design rent. I hate shiny, shiny floors when you go to the toilet and you can see everything. Design rent. What we need is footpaths wide enough, not just for one pram, but for two prams to pass, just in case there are ever two families out in the world at the same time. 
mad. Design rent. You know what sucks? Really high curbs that you can't get a wheelchair or a pram or a bicycle over. Design rent. I hate how there are no street lights when I walk home and I know full well there are a thousand boogeymen behind me and I can't see them. Design rent. I hate those horrible underpass walkway things that look like the first scene in a horror movie. Design rent. And if you go cycling in this hell city, it's just an invitation for men to honk at you. Design rent. And all the streets just named after all those colonizing bastards. Design rent. <sighs> oh, look, if there's one thing we can take from this discussion, it's that we need to hear from more than just reference men. We need more women involved in design and we all need to raise our voices about how we want our communities to look. Total. Well, that's it from us. We'll see you guys next month. Hey, Tera Marama. Happy toiletting.